Howdy, it's Matt, and in this video, we are going to be learning about waypoints in iNav. Now, rather getting into the nitty gritty, let's go and make an iNav mission. So, what is and how do we do this? So, first of all, we come into iNav, so we connect up our model to our flight controller to iNav, come into mission control down on the left hand side, and just choose the location where you are. So, this is a place called Charmy Down, just outside of Bristol. Uh, and let's say that we start there as our home point. So you'll notice that I've been and clicked on the screen and we've got this point, we have our first waypoint. So if we click on that waypoint, we will see that we've got type of waypoint, latitude and longitude, and then altitude. Now a massive tip here is that this altitude is in centimeters, which is infuriating for me personally. Uh, and you will soon get very quick at working out that actually that's 60 meters. Or is it 60 meters? No, that is 600 meters. So we'll change that to 60 meters and then click save. Now, every time I went on and you go on and create a new point, so maybe we'll fly over there. And if I click on that one there, you'll see that ah, it's still that value. It's still 600 meters, which is definitely less than desirable. So where's that default coming from? So if we remove that point and click on this little cog icon, uh, and I'll tell you what, let's change that to 50 meters. Okay, remember it's in centimeters. Now, as far as I'm aware, the speed setting does not work. Uh, we will get to some defaults in a moment. So anyway, we've set that to 50 meters. So we can go around in a great big circle like so, and then come back home. Uh, we can save the mission to the flight controller. Uh, if you were, say, on the flight line with a laptop and you were gonna go on and fly the model. However, most likely you wanna click on save EEPROM mission. So in other words, it saves this mission to the flight controller. Uh, and then when you parry your model on when you're at the flight line, you need to load that mission. Now, the way which you do that is very weird, okay? So you need this, uh, where's the right setting in here? Right, load waypoint mission. So you get your transmitter, you pull your throttle down and leave your rudder stick in right in the middle, and then you push your right elevator and aileron stick to the top right hand corner. Now a massive tip for you, if you have rates set up on your transmitter, make sure you're on high rates so the mission is actually loaded. Okay, that's a big mistake which I made is that I had this mission loaded on in iNav and it just wouldn't do it. Next thing is, is that within your modes tab, so let me just save that in there, go to your modes tab, you will also want to set up a switch so that you can tell your model to go on a waypoint mission, which I cannot see, there it is. So that's channel 11 and that's actually a six way switch. So when I crank that switch all the way up to the top, nav waypoint is enabled and the model will then go on and fly. So let me just nip back to mission control and oh my God, the mission is missing. What's going on, Matt? Aha, what you need to do is load the mission from the flight controller, okay? Uh, or load mission from the EPRON. Now, if you want to make to any changes to this, maybe you want to remove that one, just click on it and choose remove. Of course, you can change the height. So maybe you want 100 meters for that one and click on save and then it will go back down to 50 meters on that one. Uh, and this is really up to you. Now, just be aware there are some really advanced options which you can do with multi-rotors which are far out of the scope of this video because it's only focused upon fixed wing models. Oops, I missed out something really important. Now, what happens if we load up a waypoint mission like this one and we get to the last waypoint? So we go all the way around and do our waypoint mission. Uh, obviously staying within legal boundaries. Uh, and then we get to this last one. What happens when we get to the end? Now, that really is up to you. And you only have two choices is that if you do not tick the box, which says return to home at the end of the mission, then your model will loiter based upon your loiter radius, which can be set within the advanced tuning tab. However, if you tick return to home at the end, then your model will come back to whether the model was originally armed. So, hope that makes sense. You only got two choices when it comes to the end of a mission. It either loiters at the end, or you can set your model to return to home. So let's go and just save this mission uh, and save it to the EEPROM. Now, there are a couple of daft things which you need to be aware of first. Now, the first thing is, is that you may be wondering, Matt, why does my map look different to your map? And the answer to that is that if I quickly click on the cogs 
in the top right hand corner is that I've been in and added a Bing Maps API key and I have a separate video to show you how to do that. So if you want a nice map, and oops, I've just created an extra waypoint. If you want a nice map like this one, you need a Bing API key, don't panic, it's free and I've got that in a different video which is either in the top right hand corner or down in the video description. The next thing is that you need to make sure that your model is flying okay in 3D cruise mode. So what is 3D cruise mode? Well, if we go to our, uh, our modes tab and scroll down, there is a flight mode called nav cruise. And nav cruise will fly your model in a straight line. Uh, and if you set the altitude and other things on there, is that your model will just fly in a straight line until you move your sticks and then it will move to a new direction. Uh, until you let go again and then it will just fly in a straight line a very very nice flight mode so to get nav cruise working is that you need to go to the advanced configuration uh, and make sure you have your cruise throttle or your min throttle and max throttle set to applicable values so i, I personally i don't think you can go wrong with 1500 1200 and 1700 to start with uh, I do have models, this specific model is slightly higher than say the Drift, which is only down at 13, 1350 for the cruise throttle. So it does vary from model to model. Start with these settings and see how you get on. Now the next one, and I'm gonna bring this across onto my screen, which is that do not get mistaken, I've seen a couple of videos on this now, uh, nav control smoothness does not have any effect on waypoints. What it does have, uh, and it's mistakenly a thought of, and I was made that mistake, is that this just controls how reactive the model is. It doesn't actually directly impact uh, the, the model in the sky as far as waypoints go. The next two settings which you need to be aware of, and these are the only other two settings which you need to be aware of, uh, is nav WP radius. Now there isn't in the configurator, okay? So let me show you where you're gonna set these. So if we go to CLI, okay, and what we'll do, well, I'll show the easiest way on that, we'll do get, uh, and then we'll do nav underscore WP. So it'll find us all the word, uh, waypoint I was going to say WordPress then, or the waypoint settings. So yeah, there's only settings. Now, the first one is nav radius. Now, this is key, and I, I've actually changed this up to 40 meters. What that setting means is that when your model gets to a waypoint, if it gets within 40 meters, it counts it as uh, you've reached the waypoint. Okay. Now, the default for that, I felt, was far, far too small, and 40 meters from my working out, has worked out really well. Now, if obviously you want that a little bit tighter, okay, you could change that down to 20 meters, but that does mean is that if you, it's a very windy day and your model gets blown off, you could find your model hunting for the waypoint really badly, okay? So that's why mine's set at 40 meters. The next one is a dangerous one. So I will give you a big word of caution, which is nav WP safe distance. Now you'll notice that mine is set to zero. What that infers is that I can set my waypoint mission from anywhere on Earth and it will fly to wherever the mission has been set to. Now, I did almost get caught out on this a couple of days ago. I lobbed the model in the sky, set it off on a waypoint mission, and I thought to myself, that's going in the wrong direction. It was about to go off on a 40 kilometer jolly over to the farm, so go careful with that one. Uh, uh, obviously, a higher value would means that you, your model needs to be within that radius before you can start the waypoint mission. Uh, you can disable it by setting to zero, but it does come with a massive word of caution. Now, there are some additional settings like these ones here, and I'll put these in the video description and a couple of others, and of course, a link to the iNav wiki. Now, that is really is enough of the theory. What we're gonna do, we're gonna jump across to the flight line and I'm gonna set up a mission right in front of you at the flight line from scratch. Uh, and then we're gonna go off and fly it so we'll be able to see it on the camera and also the DVR too. Good morning. So we're over the flight line and I'm gonna set up a quick waypoint mission. Now, obviously I'll cover in, or would have covered in more detail over on the uh, desktop. Uh, but I just really want to show you how quick this is to do on the flight line. And remember, you can do this on your phone using the mobile phone speedy app with the OCG cable, which I've done in a in a separate video. So let's go and get ourselves zoomed in. Uh, and you'll see there's the flying site. And all I'm going to do is set a default height of, say, 50 metres. Uh, and then we're going to go round. Uh, and the model's going to get to go. Let's arm her. Engines are. 
I've chosen the flight mode which I wanted, which is Horizon. And do you know what? Oh, hello. Let's just put you down just a touch and let you into a secret. I kind of love auto launch. Throttle. We got auto launch Engine enabled. Off. Engines armed. There you go. Auto launch. Throttle up to where you think it should be. Bro. Hands off. Right, so we're up into the sky now. I'm going to get a little bit of height on. There we go. And I'm going to twiddle me knobs. And we are into waypoint mode. Fantastic. So she's off. She's just done a, a first waypoint. I think what happened is that I was right on top of the first waypoint. There we go. And we can see her flying around now. Where is she? She is up there. Now, the first time I did this just a few moments ago is that what I did is that I had the throttle, the max throttle set too low. And there she goes, and she's flying an awful lot better now. She was wading around the sky. Now, what I'll do is cut to a little clip while she's off to that next waypoint. She, oh, actually, no, I won't. She, you'll see that she goes to that corner, and now she'll turn. Good girl. In fact, let's get you undone from there. There you go. She's above our heads. There you go. Now, the speed which she's going at is all based upon your auto cruise settings. So that's your min uh, cruise throttle and then max throttle uh, for your navigation mode. So there she goes. She's going off to the other one. Now, she should go up there and do a right. Now, it's going to be really curious to see what she does when she gets to the middle. I hope you can still see her. There she is. There you go. So she's going across now to the middle of the field. And this was all done at 50 meters. There we go. So I don't know what she's actually going to do now at the end. She should go to the middle. Goes two birdies. There you go. And she now comes back to the middle. I know this is a bit which I don't know because I didn't set... Is she just going to loiter now? Yeah. So I've got a 50 meter loiter radius, so just lost her in the sky. Although, look, there you go. Sorry, I have full control of the model, of course. Um, she's now just loitering. So she's come in and completed her mission. Now, of course, we could have set different heights, much wider waypoints. There is no limit at all what you can do with the waypoints. Uh, you could put them in a different country if you wanted to. Uh, I wouldn't suggest that because the second you launch it and if you've got the settings right, it would go off and fly towards that country. So yeah, she's just up there loitering. So if you don't tick return to home at the end, she just loiters. So there we go. We've seen how we can create a waypoint mission, how to save it to our flight controller. And a massive tip, remember to hit the save EEPROM button uh, so that it's saved permanently in your models menu. The only real thing which you can screw up, to be brutally honest, is forgetting to load the mission to your flight controller when you're on the flight line. So in other words, turn your model on, so bang your aileron and elevator stick to the top right hand corner so it's loaded. Unfortunately, there is no confirmation on the on-screen display. I have asked the developers about it, but apparently there is no callback. Uh, in iNav currently to display that. Uh, so you just have to take it either if you have a beeper connected, it will beep at you, or you just take it on faith that it was loaded. And do remember to make sure you've click, hit the high rate switch so it registers that that's what you've been and done with your sticks. Then go on and fly your model. Now, I did mention there were some additional settings to do with the HUD. Those settings are very, very cool. I will leave those in the video description and also a very naughty one uh, with the waypoint missions within iNav. You can do a fully autonomous flight. That means that you could potentially turn your controller off and the model would carry on and carry out the flight for you. I'm not going to mention what it is, but it is in the video description. And of course, do read the iNav wiki for any other settings which may be added at a later date. So with that said for myself, Matt, I sincerely hope this has given you a working insight into missions with iNav. I must admit, I've used it absolutely loads and I have been thoroughly thoroughly impressed. My only comment and my absolute bugbear of this entire thing 
is the really big annoyance around centimeters. I don't understand with, especially with fixed wing, the accuracy of down to the nearest centimeter. I think that's a little bit crazy. I would personally like this value being in meters because that would just make things so, so much easier. Uh, and it saves me Googling uh, every five minutes how to convert meters to centimeters. So with that said, let me know what you think about missions in INAV. I would really be interested in your feedback. You can do that in the comments section underneath this video. Of course, if you found this video entertaining or at least informative, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up and I'll see you again shortly. For myself, Matt, cheerios.